Hello, I'm Sean, and today I'm going to be talking about should Christians celebrate Halloween? I'll be taking five verses from the Bible that will prove or disprove Christians celebrating Halloween. So be sure to stick to the end because the fifth verse is wild. Let's dive in. Now, before we get into the five verses, I'll give you a little info about Halloween. So Google says, Halloween has multiple origins, including the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, uh, Christian feasts of the dead, and the arrival of Irish immigrants in North America. So the Samhain, or however you pronounce that, uh, is the Celtic New Year celebrated around November 1st, and it was a pagan festival that marked the beginning of winter in the dark half of the year. And the Celtics believed that the veil between the living and the dead was thin during this time, and they would wear disguises to ward off spirits. So that's how wearing masks on Halloween started. And it goes on to say in the Christian feasts of the dead in the Middle Ages, this holiday was included on All Saints Day on November 1st and All Souls Day on November 2nd. And in the 9th century, October 31st became All Hallows Eve, which eventually became Halloween. So that's how Halloween ended up on October 31st. The Irish immigrants brought Halloween traditions to North America in the 1840s. They adopted some traditions such as carving turnips into jack-o'-lanterns to ward off evil spirits, to use pumpkins instead because they were more plentiful in North America. So that's how the pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns became a tradition in America. So you can clearly see this is not just a little carving that you put on a pumpkin and put a light into it. It's, it's not innocent at all. People in the old days actually thought that these jack-o'-lanterns could chase evil spirits away. So you can clearly see this goes beyond just candy and wearing masses. Uh, Satanists and witches actually still celebrate Halloween, and some still perform certain practices on this day. And some nations even sacrifice to false gods on Halloween. So this is not something you should take lightly and participate in. Now I'm not saying everyone who celebrate Halloween are Satanists. Most people are actually innocent and don't understand everything about Halloween and how it came about. Of course, most kids, I mean, who doesn't want free candy? And they have fun trick-or-treating and dressing up, but it goes a little more beyond that, as you can see. Now, let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Now, keep in mind, the word Halloween is not in the Bible because Halloween was created after the Bible was written. However, we can find several verses in the Bible that give us a pretty good idea what God thinks of pagan holidays, death, darkness, and fear. So verse number one, Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. What is Halloween about? It is about death. And you can clearly see it in the decorations, the grim reapers, the gravestones, the skeletons, all that represents death. And notice, Jesus said that the devil came to bring death, but Jesus came to bring eternal life. So clearly, Jesus is for life, not death. Halloween is clearly for death. Now let's go into the verse number two. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What does Halloween promote? Fear. You can clearly see this in the scary decorations and movies and music and along with all the witches, monsters and spiders. Halloween's all about fear. But notice the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of courage. Moving on. Verse number three. God told Moses in Exodus 22:18, you shall not permit a sorceress to live. A sorceress is like a witch, a wizard, or a magician. And God said those things shouldn't live among you. And why? Because they get their power from the devil. Notice when Moses was demanding that Pharaoh let the children of Israel go, it was Pharaoh's magicians that were going against Moses and against God and trying to perform their little magic against God. And of course, they were no match for God. And notice throughout the Bible, there were magicians and sorcerers like Eliamus and Simon the sorcerer who opposed the works of God, but they failed miserably. God clearly is against this stuff. That's why I don't watch movies about magic, dark magic, witchcraft, anything with wizards. I don't watch that stuff. Why? 
because these things can pollute your mind. They can actually end up turning you away from God and then you start seeking those things instead of seeking God. This is what happened to King Saul. He disobeyed God and he went to a witch and he did not live much longer after that. This is very serious, people. Moving on to verse number four. So 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Halloween is clearly about darkness. I mean, think about it. When do kids go trick-or-treating? It's at night. When do people perform their practices and religious ceremonies in other nations? It's at night. Halloween is all about darkness, but Jesus is all about light. Notice John 3:19 says, And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now there are people who do evil things on Halloween and they will try to make it seem like Halloween is just another holiday and it's fine to celebrate, but that is not the case here. I'd rather obey God and do what he tells me to do than to join the world and go against God. Now I think those first four verses pretty much sum up what God thinks about Halloween, but you won't believe what the Bible says in this fifth verse. Check this out. Paul says in Colossians 2, 16 and 18, so don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying that they have had visions about these things, their sinful minds have made them proud. Paul is saying that the people who celebrate these pagan holidays are wicked and sinful and proud. And you know, it is pride what caused Lucifer to sin and rebel against God and ultimately be kicked out of heaven. And it is the same pride he used to trick Adam and Eve into thinking that they could be like God. And what happened after that? It was the downfall of mankind. Listen, the devil knows what he is doing. He's not doing anything new. He knows that man's greatest downfall is pride because it was his greatest downfall and he will use it again and again to influence people and make them prideful so much to the point that they start turning away from God. So I would advise you not to participate in anything pagan, even if it looks innocent. Listen, if you give the devil an inch, he will take a mile. He is after your souls. He does not want you to make it to heaven. The devil wants to destroy you, but there is good news and hope. Remember that first verse I quoted in John 10, 10, where Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus died on a cross for you, for your sins. His hands and feet were nailed to that cross. A crown of thorns was placed on his head. He suffered much pain so you could be free. He died and was buried in a grave. But three days later, he arose from that grave to defeat the devil and death and fear and hell and the grave. So if Jesus defeated death and fear and darkness, then why celebrate it? Instead, why not we come to Jesus who's waiting for us with open arms? If you want to receive Jesus in your life, then pray this prayer with me and say, Dear God, I am a sinner, but I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. I believe he was buried in a grave for three days and rose again to give me eternal life. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me clean and make me whole. I will serve you to the day I die. And I will live with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Friends, if you just pray that prayer with me, then let me assure you, you are on your way to heaven. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner comes in repentance. Now that you are saved, I would encourage you to do three things. First, read the Bible. It is the written word of God, and it will help guide you in your life. Second, pray to God. Praying is simply just talking to God, and when you end that prayer, be sure to say, in Jesus' name, amen. And finally, join a church. It's very important to surround yourself with Christians who can help build you up and strengthen you and encourage you in your faith. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope those five Bible verses shed some light on the darkness of Halloween. If you want to support me, feel free to smash that subscribe button and let me know what you think in the comments down below. God bless you all. Peace.